21. This is the number of blast furnaces scattered around the Belgian city of Charleroi back in the 60s. All responsible for creating steel for the European car, construction and many other industries. Today just one of those once iconic machines remains. In this episode we are taking a deep dive into the history of this site, starting our mission into the blast furnace. In a previous episode, we headed into the neighboring terrain of Forge de la Providence to explore the coking plant and power station. Today, we are on the 25 hectare terrain, once part of Forge T. Martinel. In the past, this complex was known for its density of many buildings. Today, only a couple of buildings remain, and we will be focusing on just two this time. During the filming back in 2020, active demolition works were in progress. So we had to be extremely careful not to be seen by the workers. We reached the first point of interest, the small power plant of the complex. This is the turbine hall which is in a heavily decayed state and filled with ornate details. In fact, this power station dates all the way back to the 1900s, making it one of the oldest structures in the area. The history of the steel complex is extensive, spanning many eras of success and decline, but it all started in the 1880s. At that time, Charlois was one of the main hubs of heavy industry in the world. In 1888, smaller forges and other factories merged to form a brand new modern company, Forge T. Martinel. It quickly grew into one of the main players in steel production in Belgium, with several blast furnaces and forges. The power station was a true sight to behold, containing many incredible details. Two impressive machines remain, although they aren't generators, these are called rotary converters, which will turn AC power into DC power. Unfortunately, over the years they were stripped of their copper. Here's a picture of when they were newly built and added to the station. Large plaques carry the words ASAC. ASEC was a Charlois based machinery manufacturer, comparable to General Electric or Philips. Notably, they were built right across the site, a couple of hundred meters further up. The station is truly something unique today. Not many of these old, mostly original power plants exist nowadays. Looking at the decay, the station probably had been abandoned for decades even when a steel mill was still active. Our next objective was to get to the blast furnace itself. The blast furnace in question is called number 4. It was one of the last furnaces ever built in the city of Charlois. Dodging security we came closer to our target. Finally, we arrived at the base of the furnace. Right at the base, we found something quite unique. 
This is a so-called torpedo wagon. These wagons, weighing over 260 tons each, transported liquefied pig iron to the steelworks to be turned into steel. At the height of steel production in Belgium, dozens of these trains roamed the railways. We reach the main floor. This impressive site is the blast furnace. In this cylindrical machine, iron ore and coal cokes were heated up to temperatures reaching 1300 degrees Celsius. After World War II, production continued and experienced increased demand. Tons of new investments were made, such as new sections and the addition of another steel site, merging with this one. But the most notable expansion came in the early 60s. A then state-of-the-art blast furnace was added, towering over the complex. At that time, it was also the furnace with the highest output, making it one of the most modern ones in Western Europe. The future seemed bright for the workers in the city, with all sorts of new investments being made, turning the site future-proof for the upcoming decades. This is the main tapping floor. Via these drills, clay was drilled out, letting the pig iron flow through these channels into the torpedo wagons below. It was quite impressive to see how untouched the floor still seemed. Artifacts could still be found, such as this heat resistant mask. It kind of created the feeling that the work was halted here quite suddenly. The dimensions of the structure were mind-boggling. Tons of tubes and incredible heights could all be found here. It's truly an incredible piece of engineering left abandoned. Before we head up to the top of the furnace, we will first head over to one of the most important rooms in the facility. The main control room. For this we ended up in the locker rooms where boards were still hanging, announcing the closure of the steel mill. Yeah. Oh, eindelijk. We reached the main control room. Desks were still there with a large panel in the middle, picturing the furnace. From here, the massive furnace was controlled and regulated to create quality steel. Not much changed here since closure, giving a unique insight. The decline of the Belgian steel industry began in the 1970s, with the energy crisis. After these decades full of falling demands resulting in firings and strikes of the workers throughout Belgium, furnaces were disappearing from the landscape at a rapid pace. In 2003, the second to last blast furnace went down, leaving blast furnace number 4 remaining. At this time, the mill was producing high-grade steel for the car industry. In 2007, a global financial crisis hit the world, causing steel prices to plummet. This created trouble for the steel complex, resulting in the temporary shutdown of the furnace. 
waiting for better times to come. The over 1000 steelworkers were all sent home, eagerly waiting for when they could return. After four years of negotiations, it finally led to nothing. In 2012, the factory was abandoned, leaving the workers, some of whom had been working here since they were young, unemployed. To conclude our adventure, we will finally head up to the top of the furnace for a better view. With the closure back in 2012, it really was the end of an era for the city of Charlois. We reached the top of the furnace. Today, the iconic structure continues to decorate the skyline of Charlois. This is thanks to the long fight by the steelworkers to preserve the furnace. It now has a significant chance of being saved and restored, preserving a bit of the former legacy of its once industrious past. It also commemorates the years of work the proud workers put in to create steel. A new future now awaits the city, which is slowly turning away from its industrial past to a new identity.